In our last video, we got our hands on the all new 2018 Kia Stinger and we focused primarily on the 365 horsepower version. I also named that vehicle my favorite new car in America. But for this video, we got our hands on a different Stinger. This is the base 255 horsepower version. While the 365 horsepower Stinger is my favorite new car in America, this Stinger is one of the best midsize values in America. Because for the price of a top-end Toyota Camry or a top-end Honda Accord, you could get yourself a performance rear-wheel drive near-luxury vehicle. If you're not familiar with the Kia Stinger, you heard that correctly. This is a rear-wheel drive vehicle. Under the hood, we have a 2-liter turbocharged engine making 255 horsepower, sending all the power to the back wheels or all four wheels if you choose the optional all-wheel drive system. At this point, you might be thinking to yourself, what's the catch? Because $32,000 will not buy you a whole lot of feature content in a Mercedes-Benz CLA or an Audi A3 or even a Mercedes-Benz 320, even though the 320 is rear-wheel drive, just like the Stinger. The catch for the Stinger, of course, is that it has a Kia logo on the hood and on the trunk, not a BMW or Mercedes logo. But other than that, this is incredibly well equipped because all Stinger models, including the base 2 liter version, get standard leather upholstery, a 12 way power adjustable driver's seat with four way adjustable lumbar support, 18 inch wheels, laminated windshield and side glass to help reduce wind noise. There's also an auto dimming rear view mirror, puddle lamps on the side view mirrors. We have a seven inch infotainment system with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. We get keyless go, front and rear parking sensors are standard. And we get the practicality of a lift back, which gives us over 20 cubic feet of storage space. That's 25 to 30% more than you find in the average midsize sedan in America, and actually quite similar to the average compact crossover. And then of course there are the looks and the Stinger is very attractive. Now the base model we're looking at right here does not have the same tail lamp modules or headlamp modules that we find in the 3.3 liter twin turbo model. These are not LED rear tail lamp modules. These are regular incandescent lamps. And then we have incandescent headlamps as well. Although all models still surprisingly enough get quad exhaust tips. And that did surprise me a great deal. The bumper changes just a little bit between this and the 3.3 liter twin turbo models. This rear end is not quite as aggressive as what we see in the GT trims. The base trim of the Stinger gives up surprisingly little in terms of overall seat comfort. We still have four-way adjustable lumbar support and a multi-way adjustable driver's seat, although the front passenger seat does not have the same range of motion as the driver's seat. We don't have the power tilt telescopic steering column in this model. Instead, we get a manual one. The rear seats are a little bit more compact than some of the very large mid-size sedans in America, but I still have several inches of legroom left sitting behind myself. Because of the sexy profile, we find a little bit less headroom in the back than we find in some mid-size sedans, although this is still quite comparable to the Ford Fusion and the Subaru Legacy. When you look around the cabin, you will notice a few differences between this and the GT cabin, which is what we focused on primarily in our last Stinger video. The big difference in the cabin is going to be the infotainment screen because we don't have factory navigation and the screen itself is a little bit smaller. However, this still features Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, so you can essentially get navigation right from the factory. Because of that change, the button bank beneath the air vents is a little bit different, although again, we still get dual zone automatic climate control. The instrument cluster is also a little bit different. Instead of the large color multifunction LCD we found in the top end trim, we get a smaller monochromatic display. Although not standard in the base model, you can get the optional active safety systems added to it via a package, and that's why this model has the radar adaptive cruise control buttons on the steering wheel. That package also gives us lane keeping assistance and autonomous braking. You'll also notice that we don't have the flat bottom steering wheel inside this cabin. Instead, we have a round one of a very similar design. But we still have paddle shifters on the back of the wheel. Obviously, the big difference between the 3.3 liter Stinger and the 2 liter Stinger is going to be the acceleration. 0 to 60 happens in 5.9 seconds in the 2 liter model, 4.7 in the 3.3 liter model. 5.9 seconds is, of course, less impressive than 4.7, but that still compares very well to top end trims of the average family sedan in America. And it's really not that much slower even than something like a Ford Fusion Sport. And the Ford Fusion Sport is going to be considerably more expensive than a 2 liter Stinger. If you add the all wheel drive system, to the 2 liter Stinger, 0 to 60 times are going to take just a little bit longer because it adds extra weight and the 2 liter Stinger doesn't really have a traction problem off the line. Although obviously in inclement weather, you're definitely going to want that all wheel drive system. Braking distances are going to be a little bit longer in the 2 liter Stinger versus the 3.3 liter model primarily because of the tire choice. We have different tires in that model and we have narrower tires in the back of the vehicle. So we have a little bit less grip on the road in order to help stop the car. 
Overall handling feel is relatively similar between the two models, but the 2.0 liter turbo model is just a little bit lighter. That's not too surprising because that's exactly what we see in most of the European options where they're available with a turbocharged V6 engine or an inline six engine, and then they're also available with a 2.0 liter four cylinder turbo. The four cylinder turbo is just lighter, it has less weight up front, so it's gonna help the front end feel a little bit more nimble. The engine itself is also lighter weight overall that helps reduce the weight of the car. The base trim, of course, does not have the adaptive suspension system that we find in the top end trims of the 3.3 liter turbo, but overall it is tuned fairly similarly to the comfort mode that we find in the top end trims of the GT. If you're looking for something that's a little bit more exciting than even sporty trims of American family sedans, definitely put the 2 liter Stinger on your shopping list. This vehicle handles like a BMW 320i, and that's not something we can say of any other family sedan in America, even the all wheel drive models. The all-wheel drive systems that we find in vehicles like the Ford Fusion or the Subaru Legacy really are targeted at traction, not at performance. The one thing you'll notice about the 2.0-liter turbo out on the road is that fuel economy is going to be below the 2.0-liter turbos or 1.5-liter turbos that we find in most American family sedans. However, those are not necessarily the best competitors for the Kia because this Kia really competes more with the V6 that we find in the Toyota Camry or the top-end 2.0-liter turbo that we find in the Honda Accord. Zero to 60 times are actually going to be more similar to those models than the smaller turbocharged engine or the smaller naturally aspirated engine that we find in the Camry. With all the hype that's been circling around the Stinger, you would expect the top end trim to be exactly what it is. It's fast, it handles well, it's chock full of all the luxury gadgets and gizmos that you'd expect in a luxury sedan, and it comes at a significant discount over something like a BMW 440i or an Audi A5 or S5 Sportback. Now that's all to be expected, but what I did not expect is for the base model to be an excellent value. Because most manufacturers, when they create a base model like this, they start stripping a whole ton of things out. They would replace the leather with fake leather, or they would replace it with cloth, or they'd take away the power seats and give us manual seats. They'd take away the laminated glass. They'd take away the parking sensors. They would definitely take away the quad exhaust tips. But for a variety of reasons, Kia chose not to do that with the Stinger. Now, the most logical reason for that, of course, is it helps streamline inventory. Why make different exhaust components when you could just use the same exhaust components? Why make different seats when you could just coat everything in leather? It helps simplify things, but it also helps make the base version an incredibly good buy. If you're currently shopping for a top-end Camry or an Accord or any of the entry-level luxury vehicles in America, whether that's an A3 or a 320i or a Mercedes-Benz CLA, you should definitely put the base Kia Stinger on your shopping list. You actually get more standard feature content inside this cabin for that base price that you find in your average entry-level luxury vehicle. Even something like an Acura TLX, which is generally considered to be an excellent luxury buy in America in its base form, is going to have less standard feature content than we find in this vehicle. And of course, the Stinger is going to handle much better than the TLX. The rear-wheel drive nature of the Stinger makes this an awful lot more fun to drive than your average family sedan in America. And I would argue this is still more fun to drive than those compact front-wheel drive vehicles in the luxury segment, like the Audi A3, or the Mercedes-Benz CLA. Be sure to check out those related videos down there at the bottom of your screen. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. And of course, stay tuned for our full and complete review on the Stinger coming up soon. Hopefully we will be able to get our hands on the two liter version and the 3.3 liter version for a complete week. I'll see you later.